Welcome back. We have a BCS Health Minister joining us on the show, Camels North Thompson, MLA, Terry Lake. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, Susan. Great to be here. Great to have you here. Uh, we've got a couple of big topics to talk about that are pretty timely uh, in terms of Kamloops news. The fact that we are looking at getting a safe consumption site, uh, safe consumption site, safe injection site, same thing? Uh, not really. Uh, I think the best terminology is supervised consumption services. First of all, this will be a mobile service, so it won't be a fixed site. And, you know, I think technically uh, to call it a safe consumption site, uh, no, uh, no time that you're injecting drugs, except when your physician is doing it, could we consider that safe? So right. I think supervised is a better term to actually describe what's going on, and that is that people are, are using their own drugs and people are there uh, to give them sterile equipment uh, to make sure they don't overdose and, and also connect them, of course, with other services, uh, hopefully when they're ready uh, for those services. So I like the supervised consumption service terminology, and, and I think it'll be quite uh, unique here in Kamloops and mm -hmm. in Kelowna mm -hmm. using a mobile service. How does this work? Do we have to get permission from City Council? I understand we don't have to have their permission, but we want them to be on side with that. Of course. That. Uh, you know, the, the current legislation, Federally has a very high bar of, uh, of cons uh, consultation with not just business and police and, and the public, uh, but they all. It, it really was designed to prevent more supervised consumption sites from opening. Uh, the the Liberal government has introduced Bill C-37, which has much fewer restrictions, but still requires consultation with local government, with police, and with business and residents, which I think is totally appropriate, but City Council here has been very supportive uh, to this point. And I know Interior Health on Tuesday was at City Council fielding questions that councillors may have, which is good to keep those lines of communication open. Uh, but the part that I'm not understanding is when could this happen? Does it take, it's a time process, right? Yeah, so the application will go into Health Canada and they basically have to grant an exemption uh, from the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. And um, again, this new legislation coming forward, will it all be ready to go or will the application have to be judged under the former legislation which has a, a higher bar? So that's the unknown that mm -hmm. we're dealing with at the moment. Uh, but I think, you know, within the next, I would say four to six months, uh, I'm optimistic that that service will be in place and it will save lives and it will connect people uh, to uh, withdrawal services when, when people are ready for that. Other health services which will decrease uh, impacts on the healthcare system as well. Who will operate this, this mobile site? Will it be nurses? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, so of course there'll be a driver, but there'll also be nurses, uh, interior health nurses uh, that are trained uh, to, uh, to respond to overdoses that can connect people to, uh, to other health services mm -hmm. as well. Uh, a bit of good news. I've heard that so far for 2017, over overdose deaths in Kamloops have been either nil or very close to nil. Is that true? I don't know if that's true or not, to be honest, Susan. We don't get the numbers until, uh, you know, halfway through uh, February. We'll get the numbers for January. December was so high all across the province uh, that I, I just hope, uh, against hope, that they are lower mm -hmm. in January. I know in, in November in Kamloops, actually, we only had one death, but then I think we we're back up to five in December. Right. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's lower, but now with the introduction uh, you know, the evidence that carfentanil is there, as we saw in the news with Bill, uh, that introduces a whole new level of sure, danger. Sure, sure. Uh, the other topic we thought we should quickly discuss is that there is a new health facility that's opening on the North Shore tomorrow, uh, but it's sort of a two-pronged thing. Uh, there's an mm -hmm. upstairs part and a downstairs part, and it's the upstairs, more specialized area that opens tomorrow. Right, so we're, we have two integrated clinics that are opening on the North Shore, one on Tronquil and then one in the North Hills Mall. The one in Tronquil, the, the public facing uh, primary care uh, clinic will be open a month from now uh, and the one in North Hills two months from now but above the one on Tronquil will be specialized mental health and substance use services so we're doing a little bit of a preview of that tomorrow uh, but it just uh, to sort of update the public where we are in our four-point plan to address primary care access in Kamloops so we're making good progress so uh, they've hired uh, I think five or six nurse practitioners. Uh, we've got more physician locums coming in to increase capacity in practice. Um, I'm optimistic that uh, you know through the spring we'll see the pressure relieved on primary care access. Right. With uh, We always hear this number, uh, you know, a third of Camel's residents not having a doctor. 
Will it provide enough relief? Could we see more of these open in the future? Two well, in the next year is great, but maybe we need five. Well, first of all, that number is inaccurate. There aren't 30,000 people in Kamloops without a doctor. It's been tossed around for political reasons. Uh, it's probably closer to 15,000 people. And not everyone is seeking a doctor. They need episodic care, and they get it from from uh, walk-in clinics uh, uh, at the moment. But the, certainly, we know there's a gap, and this will help fill the gap. But like all communities, we need to continue to recruit physicians, nurse practitioners uh, to our community, and that's no different than anywhere else in Canada. Sure. Uh, finally, I know we're over time, but I have to ask, uh, you know what, you're very busy right now. Clearly, as the health minister, you've got a lot of things going on. Come May, there's going to be a huge change in your life as you step <laughs> yeah. down, step away. Yeah. What's next for you? How do you transition from here? Uh, well, I'm going to spend a lot of time with Pal <laughs> and uh, take some downtime and, and uh, you know, uh, get back into physical shape, emotional sort of shape. Uh, I think that, that that's what you need after a, a relentless kind of issue that we've been going through mm -hmm. and, and the busy workload. Uh, and then after that, uh, just take some time to think about next steps. I'm not in a rush. Uh, certainly uh, contemplating going back to TRU, but we'll see what the opportunities are. No big decisions yet. No. Nice to take a breath and then make some That's decisions right. after. All right, Terry, thank you very much for being here today. Thanks, Susan. Always a pleasure. All right, well, we will uh, look forward to having you back on the show hopefully later this year. Yes. Uh, if you would like to get a hold of Terry Lake, information is on the screen. We're back in two minutes. Stay with us.